Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing algebraic field extensions. Okay, so in this next video what we're going to do is prove two very important theorems about algebraic elements and about algebraic field extensions. Okay, so let's start with the first of these. Okay, so uh, let's let k then be a field extension over f as always. Okay, and in fact I might just put um, a little line here to show that we're going on to the next theorem to separate it off from what we had up there. Okay, so k is a field extension over f, and once again, let's uh, let alpha be an element of k. Okay, so the theorem now says that alpha is going to be algebraic over the smaller field, capital F, if and only if the degree of the field generated by alpha over f over f is finite, okay, i.e. if the field generated by alpha over f is a finite field extension of um, the field capital F. So let me write this down. So alpha is algebraic over f, okay, and then it's if and only if, so I'll put this here, if and only if the degree of the field generated by alpha over f over f is finite, so let's say is equal to some little n where little n is finite. Okay, so on one side we've got the statement that alpha is algebraic over f, and on the other side we've got the statement that uh, the field generated by alpha over f uh, has degree over f uh, a finite value, little n, where little n is some natural number. Okay, and we're trying to prove that these two statements are effectively utterly equivalent. That's what if and only if means. Now, the only if part of this is very easy. We've already done it. And the if part isn't too difficult either. Okay, so this is actually a very easy theorem to prove, but it's incredibly powerful. Okay, so let's start by doing the only if portion. So we want to prove that the only way for alpha to be algebraic over f is if this is true. Okay, it's only if this is true. Now, the way of showing that is by showing that if this is true, then it implies that this is true. Okay, so if it was the case that if this was true, it implied this was true, then it would only be true that this was true if this was true. Okay, it could only be the case, because if this wasn't true, uh, then it couldn't possibly be the case that this was true, because if this was true, it would imply that this was true, which is a contradiction. I'm sorry, that sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is, but effectively, to show the only if portion here, we just have to show that if alpha is algebraic over f, it implies that this is true, and then showing the if portion is showing that if this is true, it implies this is true, okay, to show that these two are effectively equivalent statements. So, how do we know that this is going to be the case then? Well, it's through what we've just proven. We know that if alpha is algebraic over f, then the field generated by alpha over f is going to be isomorphic to uh, this quotient ring structure that we've got here, and we know that the degree of that field extension of f is going to just be the degree of the uh, minimal polynomial for alpha over f. Okay, so we can say therefore that the degree of the field generated by alpha over f over f is just going to equal the degree of the minimal polynomial for alpha over f. Okay, so if the element alpha is algebraic, then of course we've now shown that it will have a minimal polynomial uh, over the field f, which we call the minimal polynomial for alpha over f, and the degree of this is going to equal the degree of the field generated by alpha over f over f. Okay, this answer here. Now this is certainly going to be fine, as it's just some polynomial in the ring of polynomials over the field f. Okay, so it will have some finite natural number as the answer, and um, this therefore is going to be finite. So we've shown that if this is true, this is true. Okay, and because that is the case, if this is not true, it cannot be the case that this is true. So this can only be true if this is true. Okay, because if this wasn't true and this was true, it would imp this being true would imply that this was true, which is a contradiction. I hope you understand uh, that. Okay, now let's do the if portion of this. So let's do the if portion now. And the if portion is equivalent to showing that if this is true, then it implies 
that this is true. Okay, so the backwards arrow now. Okay, right, so the if part we haven't actually already shown, but again, it's very easy uh, to do. Okay, so we're going to start then with the assumption that the degree of the field generated by alpha over f over f is some finite little value is equal to little n, and we're now going to, from this, be able to show that alpha is an algebraic element over the smaller field, capital F. Now remember, to show that an element is algebraic over the smaller field, capital F, what we need to show is that there is some non-zero polynomial in the ring of polynomials over that field which has alpha as a root. That's all we need to do. So we need to show that if the degree of the field generated by alpha over f is some finite value, little n here, that I can find you some polynomial, which is a non-zero polynomial, in the field, uh, sorry, in the ring of polynomials over the field, which has alpha as a root. Now, how can I do this? Well, remember, what is the degree of a field extension, okay, over another smaller field? Uh, well, all this is, is the dimension of this one, this field extension, viewed as a vector space over f. So this tells me that when we view this as a vector space over this, we have n little basis vectors here. So if I now take a set of elements of this field extension here, that has, let's say, n plus 1 elements in it, I will know that that set has to be linearly dependent, because any set of vectors that has more vectors in it than the dimension of the vector space has to be linearly dependent. Okay, that's a basic uh, fact from linear algebra. Okay, so here is the set I'm going to take. I'm going to take the element 1, which is certainly an element of my field extension. I'm going to take the element alpha, alpha squared, all the way up to alpha to the n. All of these are in my field extension um, here, f of alpha, okay, because all of the elements of the field have to be in there, alpha has to be in there, so all powers of alpha have to be in there. Okay, so all of these are elements in this field extension, f of alpha here. But of course, how many do I have here? I have n plus 1 things in this set, because from counting from alpha up to alpha to the n, we have n of those plus the 1 here, so we have n plus 1 uh, elements of the field extension in this set. So this has to be linearly dependent uh, over the smaller field, capital F, i.e. I have to be able to find some linear combination, okay, where the coefficients are from the smaller field, capital F, of these, which will give me the zero element in my field extension. Okay, so let me do this now. So let's have the coefficients called b's. So we'll have b0 in front of 1, and I'll just write b0, I won't bother putting b0 times 1, plus b1 times alpha, plus b2 times alpha squared, plus all the way up to bn times alpha n is equal to zero, and this is a non-trivial linear combination. There must exist a non-trivial linear combination, i.e. a linear combination where not all of these coefficients are equal to zero, which gives me zero here. Okay, that's because I know that this has to be linearly dependent. Okay, so there must exist a non-trivial linear combination where the coefficients are all from my field, capital F, and I should put that bi's are all elements of the smaller field, capital F here, okay, uh, which will give me the zero element in the field extension. Now, of course, just consider the polynomial b0 plus b1x plus all the way up to bn x to the n, because not all of these are zero, that's a non-zero polynomial in the ring of polynomials with coefficients in the field capital F, because look, all the coefficients are in the field capital F. And what do I know now? If I evaluate this at alpha, I will get zero. Okay, so note the difference in the addition and multiplication and taking to the power of something over here. These additions, these multiplications, and these taking to the powers, they actually mean uh, those operations in the field extension, uh, f of alpha here, whereas the additions and sticking the elements of the field in front of the powers of x and the x to the powers, they are now just the formal, hard, boring meaning in the ring of polynomials over the field capital F. So now it's just a symbolic addition there. We've just stuck coefficients in front of placeholders, which are the powers of x, and the powers of x are just 
placeholders, they don't actually mean anything anymore, okay? But if we did evaluate this at alpha, it would turn it into this, and we know that we then end up with zero here. So indeed, I have found you a non-zero polynomial in the ring of polynomials over the field F, uh, which would have alpha as a root, okay? Excellent. So I've now proven the definition of alpha being an algebraic element over F. So I've proven this backwards green arrow here. I've proven the if. So if um, this is true here, then this is also going to be true. Excellent. So we now know that alpha is algebraic over a field capital F if and only if it's an utterly equivalent statement to saying that the degree of the field generated by alpha over F is equal to some finite value. Okay, now, one final theorem then, a corollary effectively of this, so I might just actually put this as a corollary because it's going to utterly depend on what we've just done, what we've just managed to successfully prove. Okay, so the corollary is you can conclude that a field extension is algebraic. This was about elements in a, a field extension. Now you can prove that K, which is a field extension of F, is algebraic. Okay, so the entire field extension K is algebraic over F if it's finite, okay? If the degree of K over F, and note this is just if this time, not if and only if, okay? So if the degree of K over F uh, is some finite value, so again, I'll put little m here. Okay, so what this means is that if you have any field extension which is a finite field extension, i.e. the degree of the field extension over the smaller field is finite, then you can instantly conclude that that is an algebraic field extension over your smaller field, capital F. Okay, so how am I going to prove that? So we're going to start off with this statement here and try and show that K over F is indeed algebraic. Okay, right. So what do I need to show in order to show that uh, the field extension K is an algebraic field extension of F? I need to show that for all alpha, okay, so for all alpha which are an element of the field extension capital K, that alpha as an element is algebraic over the smaller field F, okay? How can I show that? Well, if I could show now, and I'll just pull this down a bit, if I could show that the degree of the field generated by alpha over f uh, was some finite value, then I would have proven that alpha is algebraic over f. So if I could show that the degree of the field generated by alpha over f over f uh, was some finite value, okay, so is finite, then I'd be in business. And if I could show this for an arbitrary alpha, do you agree that I'd be in business? So if I could show for any alpha is an element of K that this thing is finite, then I could conclude that alpha is algebraic over F by my previous theorem, and then I'd have shown that for an arbitrary element in K, it's algebraic over F. And indeed, that's the definition of K being an algebraic field extension over F. So all I actually have to show is that for an arbitrary alpha is an element of K, that this is true, that the degree of the field generated by alpha over F is finite, okay, over F. Right, so how can I do that? Well, it's easy from this, because whatever this is, whatever the field generated by alpha over F actually is, it's always going to be a subfield of the larger field, capital K. Now that means that we can view it as a subspace of the um, vector space K viewed as a vector space over the field F. So in fact, uh, F of alpha here is a subspace of the vector space K, which is a vector space over the field F. Okay, now that's going to mean that the dimension of this vector space over the field F, this subspace uh, over F, is going to be less than or equal to the dimension of the larger vector space over F. Okay, so because, remember that the degree of a field extension just refers to this dimension, okay, of a vector space over, um, uh, well, the dimension of the vector space when you're viewing it as a vector space over the smaller field, what we can know is the dimension of the larger vector space is always going to be greater than or equal to the dimension of the smaller subspace. Okay, which is f of alpha here. So I always know that the degree of f of alpha over f is always going to be less than or equal to n. 
and of course that means that this is always going to be finite for an arbitrary alpha is in the field extension k. So let me just repeat that argument. So you take an arbitrary alpha as an element of k, you can conclude that the degree of the field generated by alpha over f over f is actually going to be finite because this is a subspace of larger vector space k viewed as a vector space over f and therefore the dimension of it has to be less than or equal to the dimension of the larger vector space. The dimension of the larger vector space is finite, so that implies this is also going to be finite. Okay, because of our previous theorem, whenever the degree of f of alpha over f is finite, we know that alpha is algebraic over f. Okay, and because we've now picked and done this for an arbitrary alpha as an element of the larger field capital K, we know that it's true for a general alpha as an element of the field extension capital K, and therefore we know that for all alpha as an element of this larger field capital K, uh, it's going to be algebraic over the smaller field capital F. So we can indeed conclude that the field extension K is algebraic over the smaller field capital F. Okay, and we will end this video on algebraic field extensions with that theorem. So you can now easily conclude that a field extension is an algebraic field extension of a smaller field f if it's finite. So whenever you've got a finite field extension, you can instantly say that's algebraic.